Hi, this is Johnny with Mobile Geeks. Today we're going to take a look at the Gigabyte Tegra Note 7 with the Tegra 4 inside. We're going to take a look at some gameplay and how it stacks up against the previous generation's Tegra 3. Today we're taking a look at the performance of the Tegra 4 processor. We're not going to focus on specs and benchmarks, but rather how much of an improvement it is from what came before in real-world performance. We're going to show you some side-by-side -side gameplay with the previous generation Tegra 3. The devices we're using are the Tegra Note 7 from Gigabyte to show off the Tegra 4 and the Asus Transformer Infinity 201 for the Tegra 3. So this is Bloodsword THD, Sword of Ruin. And you'll see the biggest difference here is the lack of dynamic shadows. The Tegra 3 version doesn't even attempt them, but it does make a big difference in the realism. And you see a lot of enemies on screen, no problem, the processor can handle that. A lot of shadows. Not so much dynamic lighting on the actual um, magic and the, the fireballs from that and so forth. It doesn't actually light up the surrounding area. As long as you're patient though, he's no problem really. This is Dead Trigger 2. It's a cool game and it's very cross-platform. But the puddle of water right at that start there is left out on the Tegra 3 version. There's the nice reflections of the Tegra 3, or sorry, Tegra 4. is a very nice effect, but probably very processor hungry. Another thing I noticed, the load time on the Tegra 3 version was dramatically longer. I don't know if that's because of slower memory or because of the processor, while well, probably really a bit of both. Maybe the pipe range itself, if you watch that, you can easily see the lighting on there itself. Dynamic lighting, I should say. And these guys are pretty to get killed. Let's go inside. Nice uh, lens flare effect. This is Eden to Green. It's a lot like Plants vs. Zombies, actually, but actually a lot prettier looking. First thing you notice in the side by side is the lack of shadows in the Tiger 3 version. Tiger 4 has lots of shadows. Can zoom in, look around here, pretty good character models. But actually, some objects are skipped altogether in the non Tegra version of this game. Look, nice textures, good flame effects. Nice lens flare. So this is Dead on Arrival 2, a little confusing with the DOA fighting franchise, but the DOA here stands for something different. Uh, you'll see the graphics are cranked up right as far as they can go. With all the shadows it's sometimes hard to see where you are, and easy to get stuck in a corner. Mm, something there. <laughs> and I don't know where that big guy came from. There is some dynamic lighting from the surroundings on both versions, but the Tegra 3 version doesn't have a flashlight that the main character carries. I find that really adds a lot to the game. Being not able to see so well actually makes it more, more scary. This game is called Zombie Driver. This game is pretty cool. Uh, this was available on Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network, but it seems there were some issues with their publisher, so now I believe it's no longer actually available on those platforms. 
there's some dynamic lighting on the Tega 4, but if you notice here, you'll see the turbo boost, the flames from the turbo boost don't actually light up any of the surroundings. You'll notice this first level is very different the between the Tega 4 version and the Tega 3. The Tega 4 version is a nighttime level with headlights as most of the lighting, but they didn't even attempt that with the Tega 3 version. And, excuse my wandering on the road, I found the controls way too fiddly. They weren't so bad for the race, but for the running over and shooting zombies part on the main levels, I found them way too sensitive. I ended up running donuts most of the time and getting the zombies that, that way. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Johnny, from Mobile Geeks. What?